we have looked into quite a number of issues involving investing in shares or buying shares of listed companies. We have explained different Sharia screening methodologies. We have highlighted some of the issues and points which may arise as part of trading in shares. And at the end, we presented a very simple process for setting up an Islamic equity fund. Now, all this discussion must have some relevance to our daily life. Islamic contract, discussion on them, and discussion on Islamic modes of financing, their applications to business and finance, and so on, all this must have relevance to our general Islamic dealings. Universities may technical knowledge jata hai for the students to acquire it and they should be getting some job. This is something very good. Everyone needs it. However, there is another aspect. Talim is one and Tarbiyat is another one. We have studied Islamic contracts now. We have gone into a lot of details of Islamic modes of financing. We have uh, looked into some technical aspects of applications of these Islamic contracts and Islamic modes of financing. It would all be absurd and futile if we cannot get implications for our daily life from this conversation. So, I would like to spend a few minutes to highlight some of the issues which may arise in our daily life and they have relevance or this has relevance for the use of Islamic contracts or Islamic modes of financing. First thing which I must highlight is that all of us, whether this is our family life, this is our social life, or this is our employment, our business life, etc., we must ensure that we fulfill contract. A contract between me and you, that is the document which must determine my behavior. In certain cases, these contracts are not there. We call them implicit contracts. We must observe those implicit or in some cases explicit contracts, but not written. We are very casual in our lifestyle. A lot of times you go to a vendor, taxi me a bete hain. Taxi driver se poochte hain, samna baad jane ka kitna kiraya. Wo gada saab jitna marzi de de. This is not Islamic behavior. If you sit in the taxi and go wherever you want to go and the driver has told you jitna marzi de di jiye. Aap paanch so jeb se nikal ke dete hain. Wo gada ye to kam hai. So, it's important and this is a requirement of Islamic law that whenever you are buying a good or service, you must identify it. Kya ho bhai? And then you must agree on a price. Without agreeing on price, there is no contract. Ab agar taxi driver ne aapko kaha hai ji jo kuch marzi de de, aap baith jate hain. Udar ja ke aap udar ne ki koshish karte hain without paying anything that taxi driver should not have uh, any right on you because the price was not agreed. So this is very, very important that you know, we should identify what we are getting and what we are paying and there should be an agreement on that. Sometimes people say that, oh, this is very petty behavior. No, 
this is an Islamic requirement and it is not petty. It has huge implications for social behavior. If everyone is going casual, then you are not creating social discipline. So this is absolutely important for you, for me and for everyone that we should understand the sanctity of contracts, whether they are written, they are unwritten or they are implicit. So this is a good implication from this course for our general behavior. Aaj ke baad ye baat apne dhyan mein rakhe, whenever you want to do a dealing, price and object of sale must be identified and agreed upon. Now, delinquency is a form of injustice. We have been referring to default penalty. Default penalty, of course, if someone is defaulting on loans, then in Islam there is no penalty. And if someone imposes a penalty, that should be given in charity. So, at the same time, there is another injunction. And in Arabic, in Hadith, it says, Matlul Ghani Zulmun. Kisi ke paas paise hain, ameer admi hai, de sakta hai, usne kisi se debt liya hua hai, wo wapas nahi karta. This is called Zulm. Aan Hazrat sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ne, isko in, injustice kaha hai. So, del, delinquency, jo aap ke zimme tha, wo na karna, aur aap kar sakte hoon, this is injustice. So, ye nahi karna chahiye. Now, there are small acts of injustice. Normally, we refer to small acts of kindness. But there are small acts of injustice as well. Islam puts huge emphasis on avoiding these small acts of injustice. And they are relevant to Islamic business. They are relevant to Islamic banking and finance and we must keep in mind that these small acts of injustice are not small. ناپ تول میں تھوڑی تھوڑی کمی کریں ان کے لئے ہلاکت اللہ تعالیٰ نے کہی now this is not just ناپ تول this is in so many other things as well if you are supposed to reach office at 9 o'clock on a daily basis you reach 10 minutes late you are a متفف آپ ناپ تول میں کمی کر رہے ہیں آپ نے ایک مہینے میں یہ جو چھوٹی سے آپ کہتے ہیں نا صرف دس منٹ کی بات ہے آپ نے ایک مہینے میں اگر بیس دن آپ آفیس جاتے ہیں تو آپ نے اپنے ایمپلائر کے دو سو منٹ کھا لی so these small acts of injustice they are not small they have relevance to Islamic law and they of course are relevant in Islamic contracts as well. So next time when you are negotiating a contract with your employer, is baat pe iktifa na karein ke namazon ke aukaat ke liye time diya jayega. Namazon ke aukaat ka time leen. Zohar ka 15 minutes honge ya 10 minutes honge, asr 10 minutes and if you happen to be in the office in, for maghrib as well, 10 minutes as well. So, 30 minutes per day, you are actually negotiating for the observation of your religious duty. Now, if you have done this, 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 we have studied murabha, musharaka, mudarba, what is a valid sale and so and so. These must have implications for your general behavior and of course for my general behavior as well.